Hello fellow Wolf King GT enthusiasts. I'm making this video to help, hopefully, uh, others who are considering upgrading their Wolf King GT uh, with the brakes to the Magura MT5Es uh, and also doing a tire change. I know there's been a number of other tire change videos, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on that. I'll just talk about my personal experience doing it on my scooter uh, but uh, the brake upgrade is the main focus of this video and uh, I think uh, this should be helpful if you're considering it I went through a two-month process uh, and a lot lot of trial and error in order to get this finished and have it working good uh, and I wish many times that I could find uh, directions from somebody else who had done it successfully online and it really didn't exist so um, I kind of vowed when I was going through the process and getting close to finishing that I would try to do something to help others that are considering the same thing because it's really a huge, huge, significant upgrade for the performance of the scooter uh, doing these two things that I did. It's basically like a new vehicle now. So uh, I'm going to try to do this as briefly as possible go through uh, the steps of what I did, uh, separated into two parts uh, about the tires, which I won't spend a lot of time on, and about the brakes. And then at the end, I have some riding uh, video, some GoPro video. Uh, I'll put that uh, on there at the end. So, uh, but the how-to, I'll try to go through step by step, but as briefly as possible. So here we go. I uh, decided to do this. A little quick background. I'm a high performance PEV enthusiast, have been for many years. Uh, I've been building high performance e bikes since 2015, 2016. And on my latest bike, which is a Canyon Nerve that I put a CYC X1 Gen 2 Pro on with a custom made 72 volt battery, uh, I'll, I'll show a brief uh, clip of it here. On that bike, uh, I decided to upgrade after doing the power plant and the powertrain uh, with the motor and the battery. The bike was great, but I realized that the suspension, brakes, all the other components were not uh, up to snuff, not matching the level of the motor. So uh, I did a second round of upgrades, and part of that that I did on the bike was uh, I used Magura MT7 race lines. Uh, I absolutely love them. They're by far the best uh, e-bike and bicycle brakes that I've ever used. Uh, the quality is great. The, they're so progressive. The power is great. Very happy with them. So uh, after I finished that bike build, uh, I really started thinking about upgrading the brakes on my Wolf King GT. I've owned my Wolf King GT. I actually bought it used. It was only about six months old. Uh, I've owned it now for about a, almost a year and a half. Uh, at the time I did this upgrade, it had 4,200 kilometers. I'm here in Ukraine, so we're using kilometers. Uh, and it had very, very worn out original, the, the original set of off-road uh, tires. I really love the Wolf King GT, the, the acceleration, the performance, the handling. It's basically the gold standard of uh, PEV of scooters now. I know the Nami Bernie is better for off-road and kind of motocrossing, but uh, overall uh, the Wolf King GT, and now the obviously it's been replaced by the GTR, but at the time I got it, to me that was the, the best available. Uh, I love the scooter, however, the brakes I've always not been super happy with. Um, they just felt kind of spongy, not great, uh, didn't love the feel and didn't, did not love the braking of them at all and need to kind of separate out, uh, talking about the e-braking and the, the mechanical braking as well, which I'll do in a minute. I originally was searching for information on this, uh, and in my search, what really kind of got me started on this brake upgrade was uh, I found that some people had done it. Uh, if you look, you'll see uh, on Instagram, I saw one guy in Chicago that did the front and rear brakes. Um, I saw a number of people who had done the rear brake only with a custom made uh, plate, custom made adapter. Uh, but I could not find almost anywhere that had done the front brake as well. So that I didn't quite understand at first, uh, but I kept researching and found out why. Um, I had found a Reddit thread with uh, discussing this topic of up upgrading to Magura on the Wolfkin GT. I found on Reddit a post where a uh, fellow in Australia, his Reddit handle was funnyobjective105, 
he had uh, designed and made a custom metal adapter plate for the rear calipers in order to fit uh, Magura. The, the main issue with upgrading to Magura is if you have a Wolf King VT, the main problem is that the mount for the stock calipers, it's not a mountain bike standard mount. Location, position is completely different for the rear and especially for the front. Front is totally screwy compared to mountain bike. Uh, first issue is uh, your brakes are on the right side on the Wolf King VT and obviously on a mountain bike they're on the left side. That's a big problem. And then in general the position. So I uh, found this uh, guy on Reddit who had made custom plates uh, at about the same time. I also found another a company in Israel called Sub 13 that also made a similar rear adapter plate for the caliper but I couldn't find anything about the front ordered uh, the adapter plate from him uh, that was taking forever to come to Ukraine it was taking over a month uh, in the meantime I spoke with the, the gentleman from Australia ordered one of his adapter plates too just to be safe <clears throat> so I had the rear adapters coming I uh, was looking at the front, I have some pictures of it here. It was seemed to me that it was going to be impossible to mount the caliper on the front. You would have to make a, where the original was on the right side, you'd have to make a huge, very long uh, adapter plate that would put the caliper very far from the uh, fork post, uh, which would mean it's not stable, not secure, and, you know, kind of flimsy, and just... Uh, you know, it didn't seem like there was a good solution at all for the front. But then I was discussing this uh, with the guy from Sub 13 in Israel, and uh, he mentioned that they had done one there a while back, and they reversed the front motor. And I said, what do you mean we reversed the front motor? Uh, and he said, we reversed the front motor, and uh, all you have to do is switch a couple phase wires, uh, put the ca that puts the caliper on the left side, and you can just... Uh, mount the caliper like a normal uh, mountain bike brake. I thought, wow, that's kind of an amazing idea. I never had, had even thought about that. So since I was changing the tires anyway, it wasn't a problem to, to install the new tire in the opposite uh, direction. So that seemed, uh, seemed quite interesting to me. Why to reverse it? Well, like I said, in the stock position with the rotor on the right, uh, the calipers are in a really awkward position. Um, by flipping the motor around that I did, uh, it puts the you know mountain bike calipers like the Magura. It puts those close to a standard post mount location. Uh, so with a little bit of customization, it's possible to mount the MT5E calipers uh, and 180 millimeter rotors, which I did, which is a huge improvement over the stock uh, Chinese brakes. So what I ended up with was uh, the MD uh, MT5E sorry calipers went on to the left side post mount uh, on the Wolf King GT fork. Uh, I ended up using 180 millimeter MDRP rotors and I ended up using a one millimeter spacer behind the rotor. Uh, no additional caliper spacer was needed. The MT5E caliper mounts to the stock uh, Cabo adapter uh, with just two to three millimeters of washers needed. Uh, I had originally tried the Magura 20 millimeter uh, adapter uh, extender for 160 to 180, but that didn't work well. The uh, caliper was out too far from the center and the pads weren't fully contacting the rotor. Now about the 180, I wanted to do a larger rotor, the 180. I tried the 160 at first and it doesn't work. The reason why the 160 rotor doesn't work is that the caliper is too far inboard and it hits those Allen head screws that are on the motor body rotating around. Uh, now, uh, about the banjo. Um, uh, need to talk about the banjo and then need to talk about grinding because there was a lot of grinding. This job is not uh, easy. It's not super straightforward. There's a lot of customization and a lot of grinding needed. You need an angle grinder 100%. So let's talk about the banjo. Banjo, if you need a refresher, is that thing that goes on the brake hydraulic cable and attaches it to the caliper and allows a, some rotation, you know, some movement of position there. So uh, 
I, when I was researching about this job, I saw that some owners have switched sides of the banjo. Um, the reason is, again, like I said, because the Magura calipers are fat, P-H-A-T. Uh, and with a banjo in the stock position, which is on the inside, remember the banjo on the inside on a mountain bike, it's not a problem. You've got, it's just air there. You know, your spokes are a few centimeters, a couple, no, many millimeters away from the banjo. The tire is nowhere near it. Scooter, we're dealing with a very fat tire, very close, uh, you know, squeezed together space and very close to the brake caliper with these huge calipers. So, um, the problem is that uh, with many you no know, setups and tires, the there's not enough clearance. The banjo on the caliper is touching or rubbing on the tire. Now, switching the banjo, this was a huge pain in the butt for me. Huge, absolutely huge. Because, uh, no, I, I realized I needed to switch the banjo at first. Uh, I saw that uh, I was going to, going to have to do that. I at first just uh, took it apart took the pads out, uh, unscrewed the banjo on the one side, unscrewed the, um, the uh, bleed screw on the other side, and kind of started, you know, flipping them around to connect, to switch them around, trying to put the banjo in, and it's not going in. I'm like, this is weird, and what am I doing wrong? It's trying to screw it in more, it's not doing it. Trying to do the bleed screw on the other side, it's not screwing in. Magura, great company, amazing brakes, but in their infinite wisdom, I have no idea why they did this. It's completely ridiculously stupid and it causes a huge amount of additional work and, and time and expense. Uh, they decided to make the opening sizes, the threaded openings, two different sizes for the banjo and for the bleed screw. So you can't just switch them. You need to get a different banjo and a different, different bleed screw. Uh, on your banjo side, it is a, an M6, and on the bleed side, it's an M5, so you cannot switch them around. Um, this required me to get parts from all over the world in order to fix this and make this work. But I need to say one caveat here. Depending on the tires that you use uh, with a spacer for the rotor, you may be able to get away with a banjo on the inside, on the stock side. I'll go over more about that in a minute. Um, main point about this is narrower tires are better a you want to use narrowest possible are the best for this if you're doing this upgrade uh, the reason is fatter tires 100 millimeters and wider those are going to be sticking out and hitting your caliper hitting the banjo hitting the caliper so if you can use narrow tires 90 millimeters or narrower it's uh it's much better than using fatter tires so keep that in mind it's maybe a trade-off uh, but the good thing is the tires that i use here the ulip are available in 90 and 100 and i saw with pmts also those are available in 90 and 100 so most of the good tire brands you can get either size so you definitely want to get the narrower tires uh, that's the first point about clearing the caliper and clearing the banjo. Uh, the second point is you do need to use rotor spacers, uh, spacers behind your rotor. A couple different companies make them. Uh, I saw one company had make two millimeter spacers. I ended up finding one millimeter uh, spacers, you know, for six bolt rotors. The front wheel, I ended up going with a single one millimeter rotor spacer. The reason is there is no space uh, on the outside of the the rotor on the you know between the rotor and the fork it's actually hitting the fork and i'll discuss that about grinding in a moment here so one millimeter spacer gets the caliper uh, gives a little bit of needed clearance to get the caliper away from the tire and this is with me using 90 millimeter tires um and uh again you need to grind uh, some material off the fork. I hope Banjo will fit. I didn't end up needing to use it for now because I only used uh, for now the front uh, Banjo with the Goodrich, but I do have an extra Goodrich and I have a couple Hope, so for the future I can, can try Hope possibly for the rear. Uh, but those two fit. About your replacement for the filler screw, for the bleed screw, which used to be the old Banjo screw. So you need an M5 by about no, between seven and 10 millimeter screw plus a, a copper washer. Uh, I ended up using disc brake screws, your bolts, uh, screws that 
uh, mount the brake discs. Uh, for example, the ones that come with Magura are absolutely perfect for this application. They're the, the right size, the right length. Uh, just remember that when you use them, you need some kind of a washer and a rubber really isn't good uh, because I torqued down. I tried with rubber at first and it uh, wasn't sealing properly. If you torque it too much, it just deforms. So really you need a copper uh, washer for that. So, okay, that's it about the banjo. Fitting either the 160 or the 180 rotors and doing it this way where we flip around the front uh, motor to put the caliper in the right position, uh, either 160 or 180s are gonna require that you angle grind uh, about two to three millimeters of material off the left side of the inner fork bottom. Um, I'm going to show here with some, uh, some photos and some video about where that is and how that works. Um, it's really almost no additional work to grind off a little longer strip to accommodate the 180s and the one instead of 160 fits better for clearance as i mentioned with the 180s so i highly recommend going with the 180 mdrp there's no reason you have no benefit of using 160s so definitely go with the 180s uh, i mentioned about the narrower tires also uh, about grinding so to explain what I did, unfortunately, I didn't uh, video uh, make some video clips during the angle grinding process. But basically, what you have to do, and uh, you know, you can see here close-ups of it. Uh, you need to take your angle grinder, and you're going to grind off a strip uh, that is the equal to how high your rotor is. You know, plus a couple millimeters where it would be touching the fork. There, uh, you're going to grind off about two to three millimeters. I'd say actually three millimeters. A strip on the left, you know, on the inside part of the fork where it's uh, aiming towards the wheel, towards the motor. Uh, you're going to grind a flat strip there uh, to take off some material to give clearance for your rotor. So I did that uh, in several stages and I had to, I did first like a millimeter, tried it, refit it, did a little bit more, tried to refit it, ended up like seven different iterations, but I ended up finally grinding about three uh, millimeters. Uh, there's two other things that need to be ground, and I think I'll discuss it here more in the clips, so I will play those. But uh, you do have to grind uh, a bit off the the Cabo factory caliper mount that mounts to the fork there because it's a little too fat. It was touching the rotor. Uh, and I actually ground a little bit off the, um, the mount top part where the caliper mounts onto. So you can see here in the clips uh, about grinding. Got him on there, struggled, got the wheel on. And due to uh, Cabo's great engineering here, this uh, 160 is hitting there. If you can see, there's like little indented part there. Why they don't make these parallel with the inside so there's a nice amount of space you know, would be much better. So now you have to really want to do this job. I'm telling you, if you want these brakes, I got to an angle grind and remove some material here. So the brake rotor fits. Okay, I am out of breath because I had to wrestle with mounting this which you have to pull the forks apart with very strong force every time. I didn't want to mount this once. I ended up doing it about five times. I had to grind and regrind and regrind again here with an angle grinder. Finally, I got it in, and it's uh, it's got about I don't know a third of a millimeter clearance there. I don't give a. F I am done. Anyway, uh, if you're doing this, you got to grind a pretty good amount of material off of this side. Uh, no shock tower. Um, I would say I did about a millimeter and a half. Obviously, we'd be better if there was another half millimeter or so of space, but I'm not going to take it off and do it again. Uh, one thing also to mention, I read that some people using uh, spacers, you know, to get uh, this outboard. Maybe that's just talking about the rear uh, in front. Definitely no spacers, obviously, because of Cabo's beautiful design. Uh, you know, you can't space it out. Also, now that I've had the angle grind here, I realize it may be possible to use 180 
if you don't mind grinding this whole thing flat all the way up. Um, I already got the 160s. I know my rear uh, adapter from Israel is made for 160s, so I kind of already resigned myself to the fact that this is going to be 160s instead of 180s. First of all, take a look. There we go. Both wheels spinning the right way, thank God. And if you notice, we now have a 180 rotor on the front. Uh, here's the deal why. I was experimenting, no, just testing with how the MT5 E caliper fit on there. Uh, what I found was that when it was mounted, I showed in previous clip uh, segment, when it's mounted on the stock thing with no spacer, what happens is the uh, pads are not making full contact with the one, not this rotor, but with the 160 rotor. So only like half the pad was touching and I would have to like grind off some of that mount to get the caliper to sit properly so you know your pads have full contact like they're supposed to. In other words, there was like four or five millimeters uh, where the caliper was sticking out where it should have been you know flush, the pad should have been flush with the top of the rotor. Now, the other issue is if I had ground, ground those to move in because the MT5E calipers are so fat on this side, what was happening was my calipers, I, I was testing the motor and I was hearing ding, 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 ding. The caliper was actually hitting these screws sticking out. So, one more bit of customization. Again, not an easy job. You have to really want Magura brakes, which I do, really want Magura brakes. Uh, this guy, the, you know, factory uh, Kabu holder uh, mount, it is, was touching the disc because, uh, kind of hard to see from that side, kind of can't really see from that side. You've got basically, you know, fractions of a millimeter clearance. So it was, uh, this was touching my 180 disc. Had to take an angle grind about one and a half millimeters off that side, the right side of this. So keep in mind, you're going to have to do that too, if you use a spacer, which I recommend. Now, briefly, this was actually, no, there were several parts of the installation that were difficult and time consuming. Uh, physically difficult, but uh, mentally the most difficult part was this next part. So phase and hall wiring settings. Uh, I will just discuss this briefly and save you the trouble that I went through. And I wish uh, so much if someone had posted this information, uh, had this posted online, had a video like I'm doing to save the work, it would have saved me literally dozens of hours that I spent on this stupid phase and hall wire settings. And um, many, many, many hours. Uh, long story short as possible, I contacted Cabo Tech Support when I was uh, going through this process, when I realized I need to reverse the motor. First of all, you, you'll find some uh, videos online uh, that show, even with the uh, Cabo, I think with the Wolf Warrior, that show that you can simply and quickly reverse the, no, reverse uh, two of the phase wires uh, out of the three, any two, reverse them, like for example, the green and the blue reverse them, or the blue and the yellow reverse them, and voila, your Wolf uh, motor will run the opposite direction perfectly. Well, folks, that doesn't work on the Wolf King GT. I tried the easy way at first, just switching two phase, didn't work. I tried switching two different phase, didn't work. Uh, the very long story, sh short version is that uh, I spent many, many, many hours. I ended up, um, well, I contacted Cabo to ask them. I told them what I was doing with a brake upgrade. I asked if they could please uh, just tell me the correct uh, way to change the phase and the hall wires in order to reverse the motor. Because if you notice on the Wolfking GTR, the brake disc, they did what they did what I did, which is flip it on the left side, flip the motor around so the brake is on the left side and you have the normal post mount location for your caliper. So obviously they know how to do it successfully. Uh, sent to tech support, service, sales, Cabo Philippines, Cabo USA, all the different, uh, basically got zero response only from one of the salespeople at Cabo. She re replied and basically said, uh, contact your local dealer. Well, <laughs> the local dealer in Ukraine, and I think most local dealers have absolutely no idea about the answer to this. And obviously their tech people knew it, but they were zero help, absolutely zero help. So while it's a great scooter, don't ever expect any help from Cabo Tech Support. 
you're not going to get it. So uh, in my experimentation, I was getting extremely frustrated because uh, I was trying what seemed to me every possible combination and it just didn't work. The, the motor would uh, jerk violently, uh, shake. Um, it would continue turning, you know, the, the backwards way. It would not do anything at all. Um, I was having no luck. I was trying what I thought was every combination. Fortunately, uh, one of the people I spoke with in going through this process, he sent me over, uh, actually it was a scooter repair guy here in Ukraine. He sent over a worksheet, a flow chart, which I will post here. It's a flow chart that allows you to test every possible combination of phase and halls. And I thought I was doing every combination, but I actually was not. So I started going through this uh, one by one. And after only about an hour or so, I got a combination that worked uh, properly. Um, long story short, again, I keep saying that, but there you'll find that there are three phase and hall combinations that have the motor turn the way that you want. First one that I found, it went forward most of the time. I mean, in the opposite of the stock direction most of the time, but it reversed some of the time uh, from a dead stop. You kind of had to spin it the direction you wanted at first so the halls knew where it was going uh, and then uh, get a rolling start and then give it power and it went okay. So again, many more hours of experimentation. Finally, I found the working combination. So sorry about the long-winded uh, run up to this, but here you go. If you're reversing the motor, you're welcome. This is the right combination. It will save you tons of hours to do it. I'll, I'll post it uh, on the screen here and I'll explain it too. So going from controller to motor. So I'm saying controller, motor, controller, wire first, motor, wire after that. On your phase wires, these are your thick ones. Green controller goes to green motor. Yellow controller goes to blue motor. Blue on the controller goes to yellow motor. Now, on the hall sensor wires, blue controller goes to blue motor, and you switch the yellow and green. So yellow controller goes to green motor, and green controller goes to yellow motor. The way you switch uh, the phase wires is you disconnect that, uh, I think it's five pin, I don't have the photos in front of me, uh, I think it's five pin connector, anyway, the small connector for the hall wires. You disconnect that and then on the male side of the pins you can kind of push in where the where the pins come out there's a little hook there uh, you can push that down and carefully pull out the uh, male side of the hall uh, you know wire from the connector and move that switch them around and then kind of pull that little uh, lip uh, no that little part that sticks out pull it back out so it stays in there so You'll understand when you take apart the hall connector, you can uh, change that pretty easily. So again, the, that's in. the working combination. Unbelievable. I've now tested that They're for hundreds of kilometers. Right uh, motor spins the correct way forward, never reverses, doesn't overheat, has full power, normal amp consumption, normal temperature. So that is the working combination. And you know, uh, in an email, Kabu could have replied, spent 45 seconds and told me this uh, information instead of me really literally taking many, many days to, to find it out. Holy f I think I found it. So on uh, this combination, no, it doesn't matter where you see on the chart, but in here on the chart, that one, basically switching uh, blue and yellow with this halls. There you can see, halls is green to yellow, yellow to green, blue to blue. With this setup, I'm getting consistent forward. And look, no extra current draw. That's how it should be. Oh, even the rear is showing a little more. Oh my God, please be the right way. Please be the right one. I gotta let it run for a little bit and see if it uh, the wires get hot, but it's not showing extra current draw. That should be it. So, all buttoned up. 
everything put back together, got the cover back on amazingly. The holes had enough space, kind of cleaned up the wiring, you no know, zip tied everything, adjusted the front brake again, and basically all set to go except for this obviously waiting for my connector coming from Israel. Hopefully it's still gonna come. So that's it, running perfectly. Okay, ready for a test drive, kind of. Got that strapped up there. No, well, obviously, can't do anything else till the bracket comes. You know, honestly, it doesn't look that bad with the, you know, hydraulic plan rear along there. You only have these three zip ties. Other than that, nobody else would know that it's not stock. So, it doesn't really look that terrible. Got this run, you know, kind of neatly up to there using the stock the you know factory things just on this side a little bit tight but to be honest not bad obviously again that's why i'm doing the video to help others doing it to not make my mistakes definitely if this was a little longer it'd be perfect those couple inches i cut off would be ideal but it's not so bad that I'm gonna you know redo it so that's it. I'm dying to try out these tires. Uh, I've had over a year of like worn out, uh, flat, yeah, square off-road tires. Can't wait to try these. So Now let's go to the rear brake. The rear brake I thought would be quite uh, quick and quite easy compared to the front, but it actually required some, uh, some customization and some grinding too. Um, about the rear so there were uh, for you who are going to be doing it now in the future uh, there were two companies making the adapter plates uh, unfortunately because of what's happened in Israel now sub 13 uh, is not operating anymore so you can't get from there uh, eScoot.com.au in Australia they are selling the adapter plates that are made by the guy on reddit who I spoke with so you can uh, get the adapter plates. I will put a screenshot here and I will also put a link to their site uh, in my comment with links below. Uh, so that is the only source that I'm aware of to get the adapter plate for the rear. Now, I thought the rear would be quite straightforward, but there are a few nuances to discuss about it. The first thing I wanna mention about doing the rear is the hydraulic cable routing and length very important about the length don't uh, mess up like i did again i wish somebody had made this video uh, and guide uh, before i did it because it would have come in very handy um, so about the hydraulic cable the first thing is when you take the scooter apart to start this process uh, you take the cover off for the you know where your uh, feet go the the battery compartment cover you'll take that off and what you'll realize is that the stock hydraulic uh, cable stock yeah say hydraulic cable goes through the battery compartment and in order to squeeze through there and come out on the left side where the stock one does it does about four or five tight 90 degree bends which is absolutely horrible for a hydraulic brake line to do now i'm not a fluid dynamics engineer but i know that giving tight 90 degree bends to any tube carrying liquid especially <laughs> hydraulic brake fluid it's not good for liquid flow uh, not to mention the possibility of uh, a leak in the future I definitely would not want uh, hydraulic fluid leaking near my battery I saw that I was originally thinking crap I have to do the same with my new Magura hydraulic uh, cable uh, long story uh, no the other point to mention is there are two uh, openings in the front of the uh, battery compartment in the frame where cabling comes out to the front of the scooter so I thought uh, at first well the easier way is just going to be to run the hydraulic cable out the right side opening not have to do all those 45s and then just run it up the right side of the fork to the over to the left side handle uh, the reason why you can't run it through that right side opening is because uh, it's stuffed too full of wires it has uh, motor wires going through there and battery wires and there's just no space so I decided uh, for me performance is the main consideration most important thing more than aesthetic so I decided to run the hydraulic um, cable on the right side 
uh, on the outside of the battery compartment, um, you know, as hidden as possible. Uh, I used some zip ties you'll see here on the right uh, side frame member there and ran it along the right side and then into the wiring uh, cable the harness, uh, wrapped it there and brought it up the right side of the fork and then over to the left side handle there um, and zip tied it in the back too so it didn't touch the tire. Uh, to, to be honest, I don't think it looks that bad and for me by far performance, uh, brake performance is the most important thing after going through all this work and time and, and frustration and expense to do this brake upgrade. Uh, the last thing I wanted to do was have my hydraulic cable going through with you know four or five tight 90 degree kinks in it so this worked great absolutely no problem uh and i think obviously it's the best for performance not to have any tight bends in that cable but one thing to keep in mind it is a very long cable run uh longer than on mountain bikes to go to that rear brake on the wolf king gt uh, i originally before i to the cable running, I cut the cable, the hydraulic cable near the lever, uh, the normal way that you do as far as trimming it for installing brakes and bleeding, I cut only about, not the normal length that you would do, kind of the length of your palm of your hand, which is normally recommended. I did about half of that, maybe five, six centimeters, because I knew it was a long run. Um, uh, anyway, uh, and then I cut it, uh, uh, put the white plastic plug in there, and then did my cable running starting from the back, going forward, and then through the harness and up to the lever. Um, why that was a big mistake is because now my cable is too short. You'll see from the videos and the photos that I ended up having to pull it pretty tight in the front. Uh, and in the back, it's also a little bit tight too. It's actually the full length of the cable without cutting would be pretty much perfect. I think you can install it, the rear one, with the stock um, hydraulic cable length and have it be absolutely perfect. That's definitely the preferred way to do it. So about this um, caliper mount, and I have some clips here that I'll play too. The brief version is that uh, quality is great, super sturdy, uh, mounts in the frame, great, but I did have to customize it a bit. Okay, here we are a month later. I need a little more light on the subject. Uh, finally, my part from Israel came in. No, they shipped it after the terrorist invasion. Uh, there it is, that's a bracket. Let's do this with light. Okay, that's a little brighter. So the part from Israel uh, arrived from Sub-13. I also ordered the bracket from Australia, which is still on its way to Ukraine. But this fits perfectly, absolutely great. I have one more of these left. Probably I will uh, sell it if somebody else needs it. Uh, so got the uh, brake on. Um, unfortunately, my uh, thing was hitting here. My banjo was hitting. If you remember, I said I had one uh, spacer in there, but I did have one more spacer. Now you can see two, so I removed the rear wheel. Uh, rem Sorry, I'll try to get this better shot. Removed the rear wheel, put the second spacer on, so we've got two millimeters of spacing. You can see there's still tons of space even to move the, the rotor over further. And with that, uh, no, got my rotor centered, and, well, there's like half a millimeter there, but it depends on where we are on the tire rotation. There we're fine. No, the tire is not 100% even. A couple of sections like there, it's kind of touching where the lettering is. So anyway, I think I can make it work like this uh, with the banjo on the inside. I really don't want to flip it around before. Uh, I do have the MBRP 180, and it, I'm sure uh, if we did that, it's going to bring this out a little bit. Hard to say if that's going to be better or worse for clearance. I think it's going to be about the same. Um, my problem, though, is my hose is too short. As I mentioned before, I made the mistake of trimming it a little bit up at the top there. So I really don't have extra hose space to move this kind of out further away. So I think for now, I'm going to stick with the 160. Okay, so after first test drive, which you saw a little bit of there from GoPro, Came back and uh, realized, unfortunately, I need to do more angle grinding. Uh, the issue is, well, it's a couple, couple fold. First of all, my uh, banjo bolt, yeah, it was rubbing on the tire a little bit. Kind of cut out the 
middle of those numbers. Um, no, it's like half a millimeter. I think my tire is going to be okay. Thank goodness. So Banjo was touching. Also, the other issue was uh, because Magura, you know, cylinder is so big, um, it was hitting there. Actually, it was hitting in two places. It was hitting on this, the Cabo part. The this is the original Cabo part, not a not a Magura adapter. So I actually, if you can see there, the silver, I had to angle grind that almost to nothing, almost to no material, so it would clear there when this was tightened. I had to grind there a little bit too to bring this down. The reason I had to bring it down was because, no, sorry, it got dirty. Uh, the rotor was not, you know, touching the pads fully. The caliper was too high, and uh, there was no way to move it down further. So I had to grind there, had to grind there. This is on the Cabo adapter, and then this is on Sub-13. Uh, it'll be interesting to see the difference from East Good Australia, how theirs is made, but on Sub-13, the caliper was hitting there. So I had to grind that a little bit. Uh, now that all those are grinded and put back together, I have actually clearance there. It's not touching, if you can see. So again, uh, you know, this project, it's, it requires some customization. Uh, like I said, we'll see how the one from uh, Eastwood Australia is compared to this. I think they're, they're pretty much identical. And, um, you know, about that banjo, it, uh, like I said, with this tire, uh, it fits with 160 just barely. So depending on your tire, it's really pushing it, you know, very close to the tire with doing the inner banjo. I just really wanted to leave that factory uh, banjo, not switch sides. Forgot to mention one thing. Uh, you can't see it from this angle, but I actually grinded the banjo bolt on the opposite side. This banjo bolt, I grinded it on the opposite side removed a little bit of material just to give it, you know, uh, a little bit more clearance between it and the tire. Okay, just a quick shot of her being, you know, relatively done. Uh, a couple of quick things I want to mention. I know this video is probably long. Um, I did the Magura quick bleed procedure where you do it uh, on top there at the lever like five times. I still don't have great lever feel it's the engagement point is too low so i'm gonna have to do a full bleed uh we'll do that a little bit later don't have time for it now um what i wanted to mention about waterproofing i know this video is not about waterproofing but i want to mention it because uh, i plan to take this in the snow this year and after taking it completely apart i know where the weak spots are that you need to add silicone and those are here first of all these guys these things and on ugh, and on that side that thing these two guys not sealed well at all and your wires here go straight into the battery compartment so what you need to do is take these both off do some nice silicone sealant all the way around the perimeter and probably on the frame there too and then put it back on make sure these are completely sealed especially since if you're in, going in snow that's coming or even mud any kind of water is going to go right there those are not sealed well. Um, the second spot is, hold on, under here where the controller goes. You got two fairly large openings for your wires to come out there. Just completely wide open. Any water that might splash up there could easily go in your controller. The Cabo controllers are not waterproof. So you need to, once you get your final wiring here, which I haven't done it yet, do a nice silicone all through there completely block that off. Those two, and you're pretty much uh, golden. As far as the um, the uh, gasket that goes around here, that does a really nice job of water sealing around the, uh, the foot platform. So there is okay, even back here is okay. As long as your gasket is good, that's fine. But those two pieces up there, and these two spots under here, those 100% uh, do really good with silicone, and you'll have pretty much a waterproof scooter. One thing I didn't mention that I want to say briefly is just is an overall question of why to upgrade the brakes in general. I should have actually put this at the beginning, but why upgrade the brakes? Because here's the question, the cop, the Wolfgang GT and I assume, you know, GTR and other ones, 
They have uh, regen, e-braking that you can adjust from one to five level. And that can be quite powerful at times. But uh, so if you have this powerful regen braking, why upgrade the mechanical brakes? Why is it even needed? Okay, so here's my answer. Here's why I went through all this terrible pulling my hair out and stress doing it. Uh, first of all, on my scooter, no, in general, the Wolfking GT, it's a great scooter. It's, it's it and Bernie are, are the pinnacle of okay. uh, scooters Heat now. Uh, but Obviously, as good as it is in many ways, it still has a few kind of the old style the Chinese for? scooter foibles. Uh, okay. I've been China. importing and buying e-scooters e since 2009. So that's quite a while. I first had an e-scooter like this was an e-zip 750. I had a few of them and have been going through every iteration of e-scooter. This isn't my first e-scooter. I've, I've you know, literally almost 15 years been into e-scooters uh, and, and followed and, and um, built, built custom batteries, upgraded them, and followed along as the market has progressed. So Wolfkin GT is great, but it still has some, some kind of cheap Chinese aspects to it. Uh, one is the brakes, but here's the thing about my scooter in general and why I was not happy with the brakes. You know, the power is great. Okay. Handling is really good. I don't think it matches the Bernie, but you know, handling is good. Power is great. Braking was always on mine. I, I didn't like it at all. And about the e-braking, here's the thing. Yes, um, the e-braking, when it's working right, can be quite strong. On my scooter, the e-brake does not work consistently. I've tried every variation of level one through five, on uh, power levels one through five. I've tried it, you know, from high speed, from uh, low battery, from full battery, cold temperature, hot temperature. And on mine, this may not be the case on yours, it doesn't work consistently. Uh, basically, my e-brake works only at higher speeds uh, when the scooter is kind of warmed up when it's been running a little while doesn't work really at lower speeds at all and there's very little difference it, it's there's no subtlety in the modulation the amount of e-brake it's like a you know an ape uh, grab grabbing you and pulling you back uh, regardless of the level uh, in general on mine I'm not happy with how the e-braking regen works uh, at all maybe uh, others are different but mine was bad at low speed under say 20 25 kilometers an hour didn't work at all so uh, combine that with really crappy quality stock the uh, mechanical brakes i say mechanical obviously they're hydraulic but i mean you know the physical brakes um the the scooter is fast powerful i love that aspect but i always hated the braking uh, aspect of it so you know, any high performance PEV you can see from the bike video video that I built, um, you know, for my whole life, I've been building high performance vehicles, cars and bikes and motorcycles. So uh, besides acceleration, besides power, high speed handling, great braking is super important for a high, uh, high performance uh, vehicle and PEV. So that's why. You know, you may be asking why, why is it needed to be done? That's why it's uh, needed to be done uh, to upgrade the brakes because it's really part of a high performance vehicle. Okay, about the tire changing, the tire upgrade. Uh, good and bad news of this upgrade. The good news is it's absolutely a phenomenal upgrade from the stock off-road tires. Uh, I need to first say that I ride about 80% on the road and 20% off-road. Got the scooter with stock off-road tires, the stock cobble tires, uh, with a couple thousand kilometers already on them. They were already really worn. Uh, they rode terrible all the time. I just hated them. A noisy, vibrating, uh, those stock off-road tires, if you've seen them, as they sort of wear out and come close to being worn out, they become to have basically a square uh, tire profile a square tread profile so the top is sort of flat the knobs are worn down you still have them on the side you know the profile is like a square so when you're trying to turn imagine trying to turn and put the scooter on an angle with a almost square tread pattern uh, besides that they're just noisy loud vibrating my hands would uh, fall asleep after riding for like 20 25 minutes from the vibration um 
just and really the stock off-road tires are terrible and realized that with my application the the best option was um the hybrid off-road tire pattern not super slick like pmt of course those are the best if you're doing uh, only road uh, riding i wanted still a little bit of a tread pattern uh, that allowed you to have some grip and dirt and off-road, but something that was much uh, smoother, quieter, with less rolling resistance. I found a new tire on the market. Well, this tire is new as of summer 2023. The brand is called Ulip, U-L-I-P, and it's a hybrid off-road tire that they make. Now, um, when I saw these, the tread pattern was really intriguing to me. It looked very intelligently designed for a tread pattern uh what does that mean that means that in the center and i'll show of course videos and photos of it here uh, the center has almost a slick pattern no knobs really it's almost solid material in the center so when these are inflated and you're riding straight level on the road like you many people do most of the time you have almost a uh, a slick pattern in the middle so you get quiet you get no vibration you get low rolling resistance but on the sides you can see they have not uh they have knobs but not uh, severe not super high knobs but lower height knobs which give you traction uh, off-road so it seemed like a really intelligent design to me i ended up uh, getting these from Amazon in U.S. and shipping them to Ukraine. And let me tell you, these tires are absolutely phenomenal. They are awesome. I, I can't even describe how many times I've smiled and even laughed out loud while riding as to how much better these are than those crappy stock off-road tires. It's just such an improvement. But I need to talk about where you can get them and sizes. Uh, I mentioned I got them from Amazon at as of the time of shooting this video they're no longer available on amazon but you can still get them on aliexpress if you look at the ulip factory store that's the only place that has these exact tires now important to mention about this is there are different variations of this same tread pattern they actually have in many sizes but um, you know as far as it applies to the wolf king gt you can get them in either 90 or 100 millimeter width and you can get them with or without the anti-puncture insert which, which adds some weight and cost to it but i prefer it so for this application and if you're doing the brakes as i mentioned you want as narrow tires as possible so get the 90 millimeter and then it's up to you with or without the insert i got with the uh, anti-puncture insert because i don't want to have to do this job again hopefully for several years several seasons of riding so i wanted to puncture protection as much as possible um then the other thing that's important to note is i compared the ulips to the stock off-road tires and even though the stock off-road are called 100 millimeter the same 100 millimeter ulips i don't know if i took a photo if i do i'll put it here they are much wider than the stock off-road tires so if you're going to 100 millimeter uh in this pattern of ulip you're actually going to be putting on much wider tires than the stock which is of course terrible for the brake upgrade so the 90s are actually end up being quite close to the width of the stock off-road tires long story short very 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 difficult he did it using three large uh, tire irons like motorcycle tire irons uh, i tried to do i'm familiar with the zip tie method uh with these tires it's not possible you cannot even with about eight or nine zip ties and getting them as tight as possible this tires will not go over the rim i don't know if it's this particular tire or because it had the insert but very 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 difficult to get on a uh, zip tie didn't work i just did it the old-fashioned way where you put uh, one side on the rim that that first side was okay but getting that second side onto the rim with the tire irons i had to use all my strength and i was afraid i was gonna puncture my rib cage uh, doing it uh, i ended up getting it on there both of them on there okay very 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 difficult if you can have a professional do it i highly recommend it got the tires on uh, what you need to have at your disposal in order to do this if you're doing it at home you need either a huge uh electric powered air compressor which if you have great i have one back in the us but don't have here in ukraine unfortunately 
or you need one of the bike pumps with an air reservoir that's designed specifically for installing tubeless tires. Uh, that way you can, what you need to do is you need to have a huge whoosh of air uh, go in all at once at very high pressure like they do at uh, uh, car uh, tire changing stations or in Ukraine it's called Shina Montage. Um, because in order to seat these tires properly on the bead, you've got to nail them with a huge fast rush of air. Uh, I didn't have either of those compressor or a special bike pump for tubeless here. I was trying to do it with my smaller compressors and it was just having constant limb, rim leaks. I couldn't uh, get the tire seated on the rim at all. I ended up using um, rim uh, sealer, no tubeless rim sealer, kind of like that black tire uh, around the perimeter of the rim where the tire meets it on both wheels. And they are just a world better than the stock uh, Cabo off-road tires, just a world better. First of all, they are so quiet and so smooth compared to the stock tires. Uh, it is just such a pleasure to go for a long uh, road trip, no, a long trip on either asphalt or concrete roads. Now, because they're so smooth, there's no vibration, there's not the noise, uh, my hands don't fall asleep. It, it, I didn't realize actually how much riding fatigue I had riding a long time on the scooter, talking like over 30 minutes extended it was actually fatiguing and the main reason was not from wind or you know having to concentrate anything like that it was from the tire the vibration and the noise mainly the vibration it made my hands fall asleep so uh, now a long trip with these super pleasure no vibration no tire noise at all almost at all and uh, so much smoother so just from that from lack of fatigue it's great um, also they definitely have less rolling resistance. I can certainly feel that uh, the scooter uh, free rolls longer than it did before. Um, I haven't done a full battery comparison, but I did uh, have a first long ride, and uh, I'll put it here. But as I remember, I had a 70 two kilometer ride and still had about 34 percent of battery left which is great it's it's much more efficiency than i had previously with the off-road tires so there's no question they're more efficient they have lower rolling resistance and you'll get longer range with them so uh, again i highly highly recommend uh, upgrading to these tires the scooter now with the Magura MT5Es and these tires, it's like a new vehicle. Really, it rides like a brand new vehicle. So uh, the braking performance is just phenomenal. I actually haven't even mentioned that much yet. But the the, the feel, the modulation, the control of the brakes, uh, it's incredible. It is so much better than the, uh, than the stock brakes. The, the feel and the braking power and how controllable it is you have to be careful though because you can easily lock up both the front and the rear with these mt5e's so they're very powerful but the good thing about magura it's not like an on and off switch like most shimanos are magura gives you not a strong initial bite but it modulates you know very progressively through the uh, handle travel so you can modulate that braking power very good but the amount of braking uh, is so much better than the stock. It's it's not even comparable. So I highly recommend doing both of these upgrades. They're both very worthwhile. They hugely increase the performance and the utility of the scooter, especially if you're going from stock off-road tires. Uh, the brakes are quite a bit of work and will require some grinding. But now that you have my guide, how-to guide on how to do it, uh, you don't have to go through all the pulling your hair out and frustration and trial and error that I had. Now you know what's involved uh, to do it, that you have to do some grinding, some customization, but it's not really that bad. Uh, you know, with this guide and knowing the steps to do it, you could probably get it all done in a weekend, no problem. It's absolutely, uh, both of these are absolutely worthwhile upgrades. They increase the, the performance and just the joy of riding from the Wolf King GT uh, incredibly. So I highly recommend them. Uh, I'll put some riding clips here now that you can see. And again, uh, the uh, links to the different items that I purchased 
for this upgrade uh, I put in the first in the first comment below so thanks for watching if you have any questions or comments uh, post them uh, below the video here and I'll try and answer as best I can and uh, if you're doing this upgrade uh, enjoy it it's worth it and I hope this helped so thanks for watching so first long test drive and <clears throat> I am pissed off no beautiful day today one of the last pretty days long story short uh, my my working wire staff something still because uh, I noticed just from my short test drive and then for now temperature of the front motor is much higher than the rear no the front motor is giving power but then braking at the same time very strange back from first real test drive 22.7 kilometers what can I say? Bummed out, obviously. This setup on front motor not working right. These tires are such a huge improvement over the, the previous tires. If you have worn out Cabo tires, especially the off-road like I have, that are humming when you go fast, have basically a square profile, not rounded like this tire, like it should be, uh, it's absolutely worth it to switch to these tires. They're quiet, smooth, low rolling resistance, and still you have grip in the dirt because of the tread. Phenomenal, phenomenal tires. I absolutely love them and definitely say it's worth switching to these tires. But have a professional do it. Okay, going for first little test drive, and I can't really shoot. No, I need a GoPro or something, but I just show for a second. I can already say with only front brake. Wow. Holy crap. And that's only front. Now it feels like good mountain bike brakes. And holy crap. The difference is just phenomenal. And this is with front brake only. Just amazing. It feels like... <laughs> holy crap. Amazing! It feels great. Really, it feels like my MT7s do on the uh, my high-end mountain bike e-bike. Okay, deep sand, obviously not the best thing to go through, but still the tires work for it, work okay, kind of.
All right, favorite church in the area? Brakes feel amazing, just rears need to be filled a bit more. 